All right, we live, man. We ain't, we haven't been. I can't even talk. I say, I say, we haven't. That's how long it's been since we've been live. We ain't been live in over two months for Detroit Lions Weekly, but we back today. And my man Josh in the comment section, he had a good question. We've been talking about this guy quite a bit, Matthew Judon. He says, "Do you see Brad trading for Matthew Judon?" And fandom aside, I say yes. The better question too is, or another question is, could New England be ready to part ways with with him? I'm going to say I could see both. I think Brad, if the rumors are true that he wanted to trade for Daniil Hunter, but Daniil Hunter potentially vetoed that trade, it makes sense for him to trade for Judon. There's nobody else left. All of them are booked up. Every last one, whether it's a DT or DE, they're all booked up. Now, you got some guys, Carl Lawson still out there, Yannick Ngakwe, which I wouldn't be mad at either one of them just to help out the pass rush, but a longer-term deal. Yannick it will be on like his sixth one-year deal. And I think seventh or eighteenth, he will be on his sixth team in six years or something like that. I still think we could use him, but that would be the free agent route. You got Lawson as well, right? But if we pulled the trigger on a guy like Judon, here's why I could see it happening. He's only going to be, his, his salary this year is very affordable for where the Lions are at. Now he's going to want a deal uh, or, or well, you know, we'll come back to that. Also, the New England Patriots, they could either tag him at the end of the year, they can let him walk, or they could try to get some type of capital for him. So I don't think they can hold him hostage, capital-wise, because they're in a rebuild. Lost their coach, new quarterback, they're in shambles over there, right? So why not get what you can from Matthew Judon instead of letting him walk away, okay? Now, when it comes to the Lions, if you told me that you would give the, the proposal that I saw from A to Z Sports was a 2025 fifth and a 2025 sixth, I believe it was, or something like that, two picks in 2025 that were after the third round. I take that all day and twice on Sunday. The thing about it is, here's where the, it could get kind of sticky. Salary cap is going up, right? But Jared Goff, he's going to be on the books for a while, and it's going to get a little thick on the back end on them books, right? Matthew Judon, 32 years old, 32 years old. If we traded for him, before the season started, we got him this year. We got him this year. Now, he does want a new deal. He's, ve- he's been very vocal about that, but he also plans to play. Like, he's, he's, not, he's trying to get a deal done, very, like, kind of like Hassan Reddick was before he was traded. And Hassan Reddick was another guy that was traded, right? Uh, da, 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 I don't want to leave F- Philadelphia. I don't want to be traded, blah, blah, blah. You trade it, right? So if Brad thinks we have a legitimate chance to win the Super Bowl, and the pass rush is just not cutting it. Yes, I see him trading for Matthew Judon. If he really did want Daniil Hunter, he trades for Matthew Judon. I would be ecstatic if he traded for Matthew Judon. Real talk. Because Matthew Judon, to me, brings something different than what we have. Hutch is a big dude. He stands up, he gets to the quarterback. He hand in the dirt, gets to the quarterback. Matthew Judon is shifty, he's quick. He had he played four and and he's coming off an injury. Don't hate me. That's just how Brad Holmes roll. But in those four games, he had four sacks in four games. Matthew Judon comes to this team. You're gonna have to watch out. If you go back and you watch, and here's another reason that I think that Brad could pull the trigger. Brad is not afraid to make a move. It just has to be the right one. I see that now. I see that now. He's not afraid to make a move. It just has to make sense. So I think DPJ was a condolence prize, consolation prize. There it is. I think that's what DPJ was. Plus, Marvin Jones left, so we needed somebody, right? And if Antoine Green was as ready as, as, as we say or y'all think he could be, we wouldn't have traded for DPJ. It was like if you see, if you see Brad at the podium, he's like, yeah, we traded for Donovan Peoples-Jones at the trade deadline. Like he, he looked like he was disappointed. No disrespect to DPJ, but it looked like he was missing something. So I think Brad and Dan see what I saw, what you saw. If you go back and you watch the highlights, especially if you did like I did, I watched all 17, all 20 games, I'm sorry. You could see we could not get to the quarterback. Brock Purdy was running all over the place. No, it was on the secondary, the secondary. Nope, no. He was running everywhere. And that happens when you have to rush your linebackers. If you go back and you watch, the linebackers are rush, rush, rush. When Ify Melifonwu has three sacks in like six games, that is a problem. Dude is a safety. So 
I could see Brad doing it. I think what's going to happen is I could see if he was on the phone now. We're going to see what we have at Tramp. At, at Tramp. That's, a, that's a new name for it, training camp. That's a new name for it at Tramp. We see what we have at training camp. If something's lacking and there's some real movement in New England, I think we trade for Matthew Judon. I could really see Brad Holmes trading for Matthew Judon. So let me know, man. What do you think? Do you see Brad Holmes trading for Matthew Judon? Let me know in the comments below. You guys are awesome. Take care of yourself and each other. And as always, go Lions. And I got to stop it myself.